Hello guys, welcome to Salesforce Predator. In this channel, we discuss about various concepts and technologies in Salesforce. This video is part of Lightning Web Component series. If you want to watch other videos of Lightning Web Component or any other concepts in Salesforce, do visit the channel. So in this video, we are going to discuss about communication between components from parent to child. Right, that means in if on certain events in parent component, I want to pass parameter to child component or I want to execute certain logic in child component, then how would I achieve it? First way to achieve this is by passing the property values from parent to child component. Suppose I have two components, a parent and a child component. In the child component, I'll declare a property with at the rate API decorator, right? This means the property can be accessed outside of this component. Now in the parent component, I'll pass the value of this child components property while declaring the child component, right? So let's implement this. We'll go to VS code and create two components over here. One parent component and another child component. We'll place it in the same directory. Now inside child component, in the JavaScript file, we'll de declare one property using at the rate API decorator. We'll give a default value to it. Also, we need to import this at the rate API decorator. Further, we'll use this property inside our HTML file. So we'll create a lightning card. Also, we'll use an icon over here. Okay. Now, what we'll do is we'll pass the value for this property from parent component. Okay. So, inside the parent component, I'll use the child component. Notice the case while writing the child component's name. It has to be in a kebab case. Also the property's name is to be in a kebab case only, okay? In the JavaScript file of parent component, We'll assign some value to this parent value property, okay? We'll decorate it using at the rate track. And import the at the rate track over here. Fine.
Now in the configuration file of a parent component, we'll add some target so that we can use our component inside our Salesforce org's home page. Okay. We'll make the is exposed parameter as true. We'll save our changes and then deploy our code to Salesforce Org. Okay. Once it is deployed to Salesforce Org, we'll add our, our component over here in the home page of sales application, right? Still getting deployed. Yeah, it has been deployed successfully, right? We'll refresh this. We'll go to setup and edit this page so that will be redirected to Lightning App Builder. Okay. Now here in the custom lightning components, we should be able to see our component. Yes. So the parent video component, which we have created is available over here, right? So we'll drag this and add it over here in our app page, home page. We'll save the changes and we'll go back to home page. Okay once the changes have been saved. Now you can see in the component, the value which we have passed from parent component is visible over here, right? It has overridden the child components value. Now suppose on click of certain event, uh, say on click of button, I want to change the value passed to the child component. So what I'll do is I'll create a button over here We'll give a label to it. And on click of this button, I'll call a JavaScript method. We'll write the method over here in a JavaScript file. Now we'll save the changes and deploy our code to Salesforce. We have deployed our code. Let's go to the home page and refresh this. We can see the button we have added. When we'll click on this button, see the value is getting changed, right? So on click of particular event also, we can change the value which we are passing to the child component. 
now next is on uh, suppose on a certain event in a parent component i want to execute certain logic in a child component right so for that what i'll do is i'll i'll make a call to the child components method from a parent component right so in the child component uh, i'll declare the method using at the rate api decorator so that it can be accessed by the parent component again inside the parent component in the javascript file uh, i'll use the query selector method to get the child component and then i'll make call to the child components method also while making call i can uh, pass the parameter to the child component so we'll see this uh, by implementing this so let's go to our vs code here in the child component i'll add a certain method in a javascript I will write an alert statement so that we'll get to know when the method has been called or not. Now it's giving sir giving me some error, right? So I'll hover over this and I'll go to quick fix and I'll disable the no alert for this entire file, right? Now in the parent component, I'll add a button. In the JavaScript, I'll write down the method. And now I'll access the child component using query selector, right? So I'll create a variable child component where In the query selector, I'll use child components name. And using this variable, I'll make call to the child components method. So what's methods name? It is test child method, right? We'll save this. Also, suppose I want to pass certain uh, parameter to each child component, right? So I'll declare a parameter over here where send parameter equal to, I'll write it in a JSON format. Suppose name parameter I want to send. right and you use this parameter to send this to the child component we'll save the changes we'll go inside a child components javascript file and access this parameter 
right? We'll display the value inside alert only. So, right? We'll save the changes and deploy our code to Salesforce org. So code has been deployed successfully. We'll refresh this page. Yes, so the second button is over here. Now if we click on this button, I'll get an alert, right? So this means that we have successfully called our child components method and also the value which we're passing from the parent component, it's displayed over here, right? So uh, this way we can call the child components method and also uh, we can pass certain parameters to it. So uh, whatever logic we want to execute, we can do it, right? So in this video, we have discussed how we can communicate from parent component to child component. In the next video, we'll discuss about how we can communicate from child component to parent component. That is vice versa using the custom events in Lightning Web Components. So this is it for today. Do let me know your suggestions and view in comment sections. Also subscribe to our channel for more videos on Lightning Web Component. Thank you.